This is the second part of our branch and bound maximization problem. So what we've done here is we sort of had a look at the problem at level zero. We used an LP relaxation. Uh, we found that uh, one of the optimals, the, essentially the optimal solution was 2.5 for variable x2. So what we're going to do here is we are going to branch on the variable x2. Uh, so what we're going to do here is uh, impose a restriction, uh, one restriction that x2 has to be less than or equal to 2. And so this is node A on our tree, 1A. And the the counterpart is that x2 has to be greater than or equal to 3. And that is going to be the the problem 1B. Okay, so what we're going to do in this uh, presentation is actually look at these two problems. Okay, so let's have a look at the updated so that's the original problem okay uh, that essentially that's the original problem there okay so what we're going to do here is we're going to add in the uh, new problem or the new constraints at node 1a x2 has to be less than or equal to 2 now if you just look at this bottom constraint down here 2x2 has to be less than or equal to 10 that's now redundant okay so you can actually remove that uh, from your constraints okay that x2 2x2 has to be less than or equal to 10 it's now no longer useful the uh, the uh, new constraint x2 less than or equal to 2 sort of supersedes that uh, similarly for node 1b where we impose the restriction to x2 is greater than or equal to 3 that's how we would sort of set out the constraints there again uh, it doesn't make any of the other constraints redundant in this case. Essentially what it says is that the solutions have to be between 3 and 5 for x2 and x1 has to be less than or equal to 8. Okay. Additionally, 2x1 plus 4x2 has to be less than or equal to 25. So, let's look at our possible outcomes there. So, this is that's the solution set for node 1a. Okay and we found it was the third one in this case that was the correct answer or that that was the optimal uh, solution there what we're going to do is now look at node 1b and we're going to just check through a few of these okay now there's a couple of ones that's e easy you should spot very quickly first off x1 has to be less than equal to 8 so that one's already out and x2 has to be less than or equal to 2 so that one's out and that one's out okay straight away just knowing our restrictions we got rid of three of them so now what we have to do so just try and uh, uh, essentially take out the uh, obvious ones very quickly the ones that you should be able to spot very quickly ones that are for, uh, constraints that are related to one variable only okay for example x2 greater than or equal to 3 x1 less than or equal to 8 get rid of them first okay so now what we're going to do is we will just evaluate two uh, two x one. We'll evaluate this constraint here: two x one plus four x two less than or equal to twenty five. So two times seven point five uh, plus four times two. That's fifteen plus eight. That's equal to twenty three. Okay. Two times eight plus uh, 4 times 2 that's equal to 24 that's okay that fits within our constraints let's just evaluate Z here now that's just uh, so that just uh, we're just checking that, that it fits in the constraints now we're going to evaluate maximize Z there so it's 3x1 plus 5x2 it equals 3 times 8 plus 5 times 2 that's equal to 34 so uh, let's add that to our tree okay so let's put it in, in green here 34 okay now uh, our optimal solution for node 1a let's just go back here is an integer okay it's an integer solution to 8 and 2 that means there's no more branching along this subtree okay so there's no more branch you go to we're not going down to visit 2a and 2b that's cut off now okay 
this is as far as we are going down the left hand side subtree and no 2a 2b 3a and all that we're not looking at them anymore but what we're going to do now is look at node 1b okay so we finished with uh, 1a now we'll look at node 1b sorry let's just go back here now the restrictions for node 1b are as follows uh, x2 is greater than or equal to 3 and x1 is less than or equal to 8 okay also actually just watch out that x2 has to be less than uh, 2x2 is less than or equal to 10 in other words x2 is less than or equal to 5 so uh, 8 uh, x1 has to be less than or equal to 8 and x2 has to be between 3 and 5 just to sort of start start us off there so um that one is uh, so that one's the obvious one to get rid of that's not between 2 and um, well, that's not between 3 and 5 okay the rest for x2 for x1 they're all less than 8 so everything's okay there so far for x2 they're all between 3 and 5 so everything's okay there so far so let's we'll, we'll move on to the next part here 2x1 so 2 times 7.5 plus 4 times we're looking at that the 2x1 plus 4x2 is less than 25 okay that's 27 so we can rule that one out so we'll go on to the next one 2 times 6.5 or 6.25 that's 12.5 plus 4 times 3.5 that's uh, 12.5 plus 14 that's 26.5 that's too high as well it has it can't be more than 25 so we'll rule that one out uh, 2 times 6 plus 4 times 4 that's definitely too high that's 28 okay and finally don't assume that the all of the or there has to be one. Don't assume by a uh, process of elimination that this is feasible yet. Either it could be very well the case that none of them are feasible. Okay, so you have to check them all. So two times six point five is thirteen plus four times. This is just a bit of old text there. I'll just get rid of that. It looks a bit dirty. Plus four times. 3 13 and that's 25 that'll do the job this one is our solution here let's uh, find out what the value for z is so z equals 3 times 6.5 plus 5 times 3 that is 19.5 plus 15 that's 34.5 okay 34.5 okay so let's go back to our tree so over here we found that for node 1a the maximization is 34 and or the maximum the maximum objective uh, value is 34 here for what node b it's 34.5 okay so that means we might actually be best off trying out nodes 2c and 2d and uh, so on so uh, what we found here is that uh, where is it x2 is no x1 is 6.5 so what we're going to do here is impose a restriction here x1 is less than or equal to 6 and x1 is greater than or equal to 7 here okay now this is going to be an interesting one because we're getting into more and more places where uh, solutions are automatically uh, restricted okay so I'll, I'll leave that for the next one essentially what we're going to do now in part three is uh, 2a and 2b are done 
they're no, uh, they're not, um, we're not going to check them at all. So we're going to go down and look at 2C and 2D, and what we're going to do is impose these restrictions here. And that is it.